much, Michelle, and um, I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. It's a nice little group of us, um, and I'm so grateful that the Master Naturalist program so many talented photographers uh, that we can work with and, you know, utilize your skills and hopefully uh, you guys can enjoy it in the process because I'm a photographer myself. I love it. Um, I know that I have thousands and thousands of photos that kind of just sit around and don't get used. So the idea of them being used for, um, for conservation and purposes um, just makes me happy and, and hopefully it does for you too. So let me pull up my uh, screen. Okay, does that look good, Michelle? Can we see the presentation? Let me know if it doesn't. I'm going to assume that yep. we're good. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're here today to talk about the Urban Diversity Photo Safari Project. So this will be um, a collection of the best photos from around our state featuring photos from our very own Texas Master Naturalists, which is you all. And... Um, so really, as as Michelle was saying, we have a need. We we don't have a ton of man hours and manpower to be going out and taking all of the images that we need to um, to demonstrate the work that we're doing and the kinds of communities um, that can exist within our state because nature is everywhere, even in our cities. And one of the programs within our Greater Wildlife Diversity Program is the urban biologists. So we have a team of biologists that work within our urban areas. We all know that there, um, there are incredible numbers of species and beautiful habitats that exist in our urban communities. Um, you know, Houston has been one of the leading communities in the city nature challenge, not just in Texas, but throughout the entire world. So it's really, we have biodiversity hotspots all around us. So really nature is everywhere. And, but we don't have the imagery that, that truly captures this and demonstrates the beauty of where, uh, that, that is where we live, work and play. So our goal is to show this diversity of plants, animals, um, habitats, ecosystems that that uh, are surrounding our communities, the places that we work. Um, and we wanna avoid these kind of stereotypical gray infrastructure, you know, cities as diversity deserts and urban jungles. That's kind of why I put those in quotes. We wanna steer clear of those old stereotypes because really we wanna move into a future where our cities are are green and that where there's there's just as much life within our cities as outside of them. Um, so we want to represent this kind of biophilic ideal of what our cities can be. We also want to show people, um, you know, we've had people have been in Texas for thousands and thousands of years and how we interact with the land has changed. It's ever changing and it's diverse. Um, most of the images that we have of people in our agency are of them recreating in some way. And that's wonderful. And, and um, but I think we need to break outside of the boxes of what traditional recreation is and how people interact with the wildlife and the land around them. Um, and we also want to represent an increasingly diverse populations of population of Texans. We we want to show all sorts of people, different demographics, ages. Um, and I think um, there's a lot of people that we aren't reaching and communities that we're forgetting about. So those are the kinds of things I would love you all to keep in mind is, is uh, are people interacting with the land in ways that we're not recognizing? And what communities are we not reaching and representing? And the third ask is sustainability. So luckily Texas is embracing a lot of green solutions to our climate and conservation issues. But you know, as an agency, we don't have great imagery that shows what we're doing. Um, so we want to we want to show these kind of green technologies and infrastructures that are being applied in our communities um, and onto the landscape and capture the diverse and innovative ways that they're being applied. So 
so the ask really is um, we are seeking Texas master naturalists who are great photographers, which is all of you, you are so, our select group to help us build this photo library that includes images of the following ecological or landscape diversity in urban areas, diverse ethnicities and communities recreating in urban natural areas. And remember that recreating word can really be expanded here and other green energy or infrastructure on our landscape. And the first round of this, there may be multiple rounds of us requesting photos and, and there may be different topics each time, but this first round, these are our topics. And we would love if you, got, April's almost over, but we would love if you could um, submit them between April and July of, of this year. And a few additional notes are that, you know, the imagery that we're asking for can occur individually. So you can have one image that's like fully about, you know, this is sustainability, um, or it can be a combination of these elements. It can be a diverse individual in a beautiful urban landscape that also has some green infrastructure in it. That would be the best of all worlds. Um, we would also credit you guys for any time we use the images and any time they're utilized by the agency. Um, and so we would love to know how you would love to be credited, how you would like to be credited. And um, Michelle will know more about this, but um, there will be a number of uh, reasonable amount of volunteer service hours that can be credited for this project. So here are just a few examples. And again, none of these are our images. Um, surprisingly enough, like even things simple as a pocket prairie um, in the center of Houston or a, you know, that beautiful new land bridge that's down in San Antonio or some, um, some beautiful shots of someone's backyard or say like a library space that has built these beautiful native plant gardens or a uh, a green belt that has someone's taken an image from above. These are some examples of images that we would love to have of, of Texas, of our communities. Um, a couple of these are of Texas actually, but there we just don't have the rights to use them for, for our like promotional purposes. And I wanted to mention here really quick, um, you know, I know all of you are seasoned photographers, but another thing to keep in mind is drone photography. If any of you have experimented with drones or drone photography before, that would be something that would be very useful. So something like this image up on, in the upper left hand corner. Um, and if you need more information about that, please let me know. Um, but that if you do happen to have a drone or know someone who has access to it, that's something to consider. Oh, also this lower right hand corner too with this land bridge that that would be a beautiful opportunity and then wildlife um you know as an agency we have you know decades and decades worth of wildlife photos from kind of out in the middle of nowhere in our state parks you know in more rural areas but very few images of urban wildlife um and a, a lot of the times it's kind of hard to juxtapose these wildlife species perfectly with this urban imagery or these like anthropogenic, you know, human related elements, you really have to get your timing right. And it takes a lot of work. So these specific shots here are difficult to get, but if any of you are willing, these are the kind of images we would love to have, um, you know, so images of insects and butterflies and pollinators in, a, in an urban pocket prairie or showing how wildlife is adapting uh, to urban and developing spaces, um, how wildlife move throughout the landscape, where they nest. Um, and yeah, so these are just some beautiful examples. Um, I would love to know if any of you have successfully taken shots like this before, because I've I've had a very hard time being at the right place at the right time. But if you or anyone you know can capture beautiful shots like this, let's bring them on board. Um, and then people, you know, like I said, capturing the increasingly diverse population of Texas and not only um, who the people are in terms of their age, ethnicity, but 
what they do, you know, there people interact with nature in all sorts of different ways, whether it's swimming or bird watching or planting native plants or foraging or just going out to lay in the park. We would love to show the diverse array of what people do in ways they connect with nature in and around um, their their communities. And then sustainability. Um, these are just a few kind of stock examples. I'm really not sure what it's going to look like in, in your communities because um, some of our cities are adopting these technologies more readily than others, but um, we just, anything that you can find, any sort of windmills or solar panels or green technology, green infrastructure, places where people can um, come and congregate, where it's a community gathering space that also has these sustainable elements, water catchment systems. Um, so if, if I'm missing something here, you guys let me know because these were kind of the main elements I can think of, but I'm sure there's many others that um, I'm not even thinking of. Like even things like bike lanes um, and, and ways to uh, trains um, and shuttles and, and ways that humans are kind of moving across the landscape more easily, green belts um, and, and trails and, and things along that, those lines, so. And um, Olivia, oh, just to reiterate yeah. on, on that green, green um, energy one, uh, yes. not only do we not have photos, but we don't have photos of things happening in Texas. And that's yes. like, that's even more critical to some of our needs too. Exactly. A lot of the stock imagery doesn't fit our needs because we would love Texas specific um, shots, things that make it look as if we could be in this state and not like somewhere in Europe or Alaska or, or something. So um, getting things as uh, Texas specific as possible would be great, especially for this one. Um, and now really quickly, just to touch on like, how do we engage with communities that, um, you know, it, all sorts of different diverse communities. Um, and Michelle will be sending out a uh, an article that I think would just be beneficial for y'all to read through. These are kind of the uh, five pointers um, and tips from that article, which is, and this is not just applicable to this project, please use this throughout all of the projects you do as a way to engage with all of the communities that your chapter serves. Um, but earning trust through partnership, be multilingual and inclusive, communicate for understanding, respect schedules and cultural norms and offer something useful to them. Um, we had Christy Kerr um, from the North Texas chapter provided these really beautiful examples of, you know, of uh, an event that they're having that would be a great uh, opportunity to take these kinds of pictures. Um, and so here's an event on a Saturday, um, all ages welcome, free food, um, and, and activities for them. And the event flyers are printed in both English and Spanish here. So I thought this was a really lovely example of a simple way to engage with the community to possibly bring in some new faces um, and community members that we're not currently reaching. But that article really is um, helpful if you or your chapter are struggling to reach out to, to new communities. Okay, and now we'll quickly go through a Flickr tutorial. So this is where we'll actually be uploading the photos. Um, so say, I'm assuming that you all are comfortable with the act of taking the photos, uploading them, cataloging them in your own way. Um, as you know, many photographers kind of have their own workflow and system. So I won't be touching on that today. I'll be taking us from the point of you have your photos already in hand, you know which ones um, you like and are the best and you've set those ones aside and now we're going to be submitting them to Flickr, um, to a gallery. It's really called a group actually, it's called a group um, where we can uh, all see them and, and um, 
pe people on my end, including me and Michelle, and our biologists can access and curate them. So um, if you all are familiar with Flickr, this might be a bit of a review, but if you're not, I'm just gonna go through it really quick. So um, you can create a free Flickr account. Um, you can sign up with Google or your email, just like any other account. Um, and you can upload up to a thousand full resolution photos and videos with the free account. To do more than that, you need a pro account, which isn't very expensive. I, a lot of, you know, even amateur photographers get the pro account. Um, it's pretty reasonable, but most likely, like we, we really don't want more than a thousand photos from each of you. We really want the best photos. Um, this is not a place where we want you guys to dump every photo that you have. It's re we really love uh, you to curate them as much as you can and tailor it to what we're asking and choose the best of those photos. Um, so in terms of creating an account, um, that's pretty simple. I'm not going to walk through that, but we will start with uploading media. So I'm going to so I have to exit out of the presentation. I'm going to go over to Flickr. So right now, um, so this is the Texas Parks and Wildlife Flickr page um, or Flickr uh, account, and I'm logged in as myself. So when you come to the main page of Flickr, you really just see like a a stream of photos from people that you follow. When we want to get into, um, let me go to setting up like your personal account. So say you have created an account, you go up to your icon over here and you can go to settings. And this is where you can change your membership status and email notifications, privacy policy, all of those kinds of things. You can also edit your profile, upload a profile picture of yourself. Um, and so yeah, the, I, I haven't done too much within here. I've really just updated my um, my email and like personal information. Um, when you go up here to you, you hit you, it takes you to your photo stream. So these, for example, are all of the pictures that I have uploaded to Flickr. Um, this is also a place where I can change the cover photo. I can change my username. Um, I can write about me. You know, here's where I can showcase some of my favorite pictures and say a little bit about myself. Um, your photo stream has everything that you've uploaded. Albums, on the other hand, are kind of a curated, um, uh, curated albums of your photos. So, for example, uh, out of the photos I've uploaded, these are the ones of my pocket prairie. And so uh, I'll show you how to make albums in a moment. I'm just going to go through uh, this, this, uh, what do you call this? A bar of options. I'm just going to call it for right now. Tabs at the top. <laughs> yeah, tabs. That's what they're called. Our bar, bar of options. You can also, as you kind of browse through Flickr, you can save favorites. So I really love like macro imagery. So I come across people's photos and I will favorite them and they'll be saved there. You can also create galleries of yours and other people's images. So, you know, I have an urban wildlife gallery, uh, macro photos. These are different from albums in the sense that albums are your own photos and galleries can be your photos and others' photos. We really won't be using these two. It's not necessary that you use these at all. I'm just trying to explain the difference between all of these. What we're really going to be using is groups. So groups, um, these are where people come together and uh, throughout the world and they share their photos. And um, the people on the back end who run the group then have access to use and download those photos if that is the permission agreement that they've come to. Um, so we have a group set up called the Texas Master Naturalist Photo Safari. And I just went to it. If I go back, um, 
basically because I'm already a member, it's saved as, as in my group list and I've pinned it to the top. I can also unpin it and it will just be in this larger list here, but I've pinned it to the top and so I can easily access it. If you haven't joined the group yet, this will not just automatically show up in your groups. So I will show you in a minute how to join a group. But for right now, this is where we will be submitting our photos. Um, we have the description of what we just talked about, uh, of what we're asking for, the topics that we're asking for, um, as well as um, we'll talk about metadata and permissions forms in a moment. But for right now, we're just gonna go through be, um, joining a group. So the way that you'll join this group is, this is a group within the Parks and Wildlife, Texas Parks and Wildlife account. So if you go to Flickr and you go to this top search bar and just put in Texas Parks and Wildlife, you'll want to go to, let's see what if they show it for people. Yeah, so it's, um, there's a couple different accounts. I don't really know what these ones are over here. Just ignore anything that says foundation and anything that looks like it only has one or two people on it and go to the one that has, you know, there's over 10,000 people on this pro account. This is the main Texas Parks and Wildlife Flickr page. And you can see all sorts of things that people are uploading from around the state. And you see, these are the kinds of images we have access to a lot of fishing, um, you know, these, these are the photos that exist. A lot of hunting, fishing, and traditional recreation shots. Um, there's some hiking and swimming and things along those lines, but they, there's very few that are very professional looking. These must have been taken by us. So um, you can see this is the type of image that we prefer in terms of quality compared to, you know, something like people kind of just standing around here. You can tell that the quality of like the camera and the lens is probably much better. Um, so as seasoned photographers, I'm sure you, you all know this. Um, but so here we are on the Texas Parks and Wildlife photo stream. And to get to our group, you go to groups at the very end here. And we have a lot of different groups and you're more than welcome to join any number of them. Um, but the group that we want to join today is the Texas Master Naturalist Photo Safari. I'm already a member, but if I wasn't, let, let me go to one that I'm not a part of. Um, I think I'm part of Wildflowers in Texas. Let's go to Texas State Parks. I'm not currently a member of Texas State Parks, but I will become one. So I'm going to say join. Um, some groups have rules. I have not put any rules on our group um, because it's such a small number of us. Um, so basically you won't have this when you join our group, um, but some groups do. So this is saying um, you must agree to these rules to join this group. And I'm gonna say, I agree. And it very quickly shows you have joined the group. So, now we're going to go back and go to the group that we want to be in, which is the Master Naturalist Photo Safari. You can see I've uploaded a bunch of images of flowers. You know, this isn't exactly what we're going for with this project, but these are the kinds of photos that I have, you know, readily on hand. So uh, that's what we're going to work with as a as a tester today. So um, there's a couple different ways you can do this in terms of adding photos. So so anyway, once you join the group, your name will appear down here under contributors and it'll show how many photos you uploaded. Um, I, you know, I could go right here as a member and say add photo. And what it will do is pull from my photo stream. So it won't allow me to upload photos directly from here. Um, so I recommend Go, you, so you have to go back to you. If you're going to upload any photos, the best way to do it is to um, go to your homepage and up at, you can actually do this from anywhere, but I choose to go back to my homepage and up here, there's a little cloud with an upwards arrow and that is upload. 
Are there any questions so far? I can't see the chat, but if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Um, I don't see any yet. Okay, perfect. So this is telling me now with my free account, you can upload 947 more photos and videos. I have maybe like 19 that I've set aside that I'm going to upload. So I'm going to go choose photos and videos to upload. And since I'm on a Mac, this is what it looks like. It may look different on your uh, computer, but I set aside a folder of images that say Master Naturalist Sample Upload. Um, I highly recommend, say you're using Lightroom or whatever photo editor you use um, to just set your best photos aside in a separate folder so you can easily just select them all. So I'm going to select all of these photos. I've said these ones are all pretty good. And I'm going to say open. And Flickr uh, will upload them here. I've also, because I use Adobe Lightroom and it's fantastic. If you aren't using it already, I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful way to organize all of your photos um, and tag them. I love using tags. So I can, you know, across multiple months and years, I can search for all the flower images I've taken or all the insect images I've taken. So because Flickr or because um, Lightroom really exported these photos with tag metadata, it is bringing those tags into Flickr. So I can see on this image, um, I don't know if this one's buds. Maybe I did that wrong in Lightroom, but basically this has the tags that I put on it. Um, and we can do, um, we can rename the photo. So this is where we wanna start talking about metadata. All of the photos that we upload, we would, we would love it if there was some context. Um, for instance, if you know, the genus and the species of the flowers that you're shooting or the wildlife um, or the location like we'll get into how to mark location in a moment um, if there's any event or people we would love it if that information can kind of be embedded within the metadata of the photos so um, you can right here just rename them. This can be, um, so this is antelope, horn, milkweed, buds. And I can write a description that says um, taken at Stillwater's Retreat Center on, you know, or 12. Um, and if if you have multiple that are that, you know, because this one is also that same description and name, you can just uh, copy and paste it right on over. And the same with this dewberry blossom. And if I had more time, I would write, you know, the the scientific name, the Latin name, if you have time for that. Um, and. So anyway, renaming them is going to be more helpful than just this long string of um, of numbers and letters and adding a description if you can. So this is this is an easy place where you can kind of do that all at once and copy and paste. Otherwise, um, there are some bulk editing features once we're past this stage, but there this is the easiest place to do it. And I recommend you do it as you upload. Um, again, you can continue to add more tags. So I don't know which else, you know, I could make a tag here that says like leaves and soil, you know, because that's what's in the image. Um, and so that looks good for that one. I'm not going to change all of the names right now, just providing you an example of what you would do, the names, the descriptions the tags, if there are any people, um, you know, we don't need to name people. Uh, this is really to like tag other Flickr users, um, which isn't necessary. So I would leave that aside, but say there are people, you know, say this was a shot of Dewberry with a person, you can put a tag that says people or person. Um, so now I, um, we're going to go on to albums. 
which again, albums are for our own use. I like to put all the incoming photos into an album just to be able to keep it organized in my own mind. So right now I have um, a few different albums. Um, they are, you know, insects, pocket prairie. So there are a couple things that would work. Um, there's a couple little insects here, so I can highlight these three. I don't really see any insects in the other shots, but so for these three, I will add them to my insects um, folder, or it's called an album, excuse me. So those three that I selected are now also in my insects album. Um, and all of these were taken during a, uh, a class that I take. So I'm going to put this is um, that class. I'll have to create that album. And uh, now they are all within that new album. So I'm going to say done. And it shows, OK, your images are in two of these albums. Um, this one's only in that one because it doesn't have an insect. And this one is in both albums because it is from that class and it has an insect in it. And so now this next this next step is one of the most important parts because um, if, if you don't add these photos to our group at this stage, Flickr will only let you import them six at a time into our group. So I highly recommend that if all of these photos are going to go into our photo safari group, that you add them to our group during this uploading stage because otherwise you'll have to do it in batches of six which can be time consuming so i'm let's just say i want to put all of these within our group because i'm already a member of that group it should show up when i highlight all of them and go to add groups and go to texas master naturalist photo safari and that's it and then all you do is hit upload um, and it says 19 items with the following changes. Yes, public. We, we do want these to be public tags, albums, and groups. And we say upload. And unless you're on a very slow connection or you're uploading videos, which we don't need you to do, um, it should not take very long oh, unless you, you're uploading a couple hundred or thousand photos. Um, and saying now it's saying adding to albums and groups. Yeehaw. Okay, so now I'm back at my photo stream. So all of these pictures are now in my photo stream. And if I go to my albums, I should have a new album. This was not here before. And my new photo should be added to my insect album. So there they are. I'm looking real cute. So now if I go to my groups and I go to the Master Naturalist Photo Safari, all of those photos should be there. So not too bad. If, um, if I went too fast through that, please let me know. But um, it's, they've really made it pretty darn si simple. There's one final step that I would love for us to go through. But before I do that, are there any questions, Michelle? Yeah, um, there, there's a couple questions, um, actually. Mm -hmm. So the, I'll, I'll um, I'll ask the one that talks about that's probably most connected to the Flickr stuff right now. How do you add locations for uploaded photos? Yes, I will. I was going to go through that next. So perfect timing. Oh, sorry, my printer's going then, off. Um, I guess the other the question to you mm -hmm. um, is: Do we need model releases if there are people in the photos we take, like in public places or events? So I'm going to get clarification on this one, but I have been out with our staff photographer multiple times, our staff photographers for the agency, and he always gets just verbal permission from people. I've never seen him ask strangers that he's taking pictures of to sign a form. I will double check with him, um, but the way in which he does it and the way that I have always done it is I just get verbal permission from people and say, um, what if they're minors? Yeah, let me get back to you on that one. I've also 
always just kind of like ask the parents if they're okay with it. I don't, I normally try not to stick a camera in a child's face without asking the parents or the child. Um, but if say there's like a large group of people in a public place, legally you're allowed to take pictures there and only if they ask you to take them out or to block their face out do you have to do that um so that is my advice for right now take it with a grain of salt and i will ask our staff photographers and get back to you on that one um so olivia i mentioned in the chat that i'll i'll prepare i'll send i'll reply to the message that i sent out with all the forms and um, hopefully we'll have the answers to that question um, before that reply too, so I can send them that information as well. Perfect, thank you. Um, are there any other questions before we dive into marking locations? If not, I'm going to jump in. Okay, so When we go to any image, um, so here's our, we're back at our home photo stream now. Um, technically all of, uh, all of the photos that we wanted are already added to our group. So we don't need to work from there at this point. Um, anything that we change about this photo, including the metadata, um, the name, the description, all of that will also show up in our group. There's only one photo and it's kind of, um, it's just linked to, you know, albums, galleries, photo streams, but anything you edit on this original photo from your camera roll or photo stream uh, will be applied. Those changes will be applied throughout all the Flickr. So let's take this antelope horn, for example. If we go, um, so if we click on it, it will expand it. We can now see some of the metadata that's already attached down here we can see, okay, I, Olivia Hahn, took this photo. Here is the name, and it'll let me edit it straight from here if I wanna change it. Here's the name that I've given it, the description. Um, you know, some things like views, who, how many people have viewed it, favorited, commented on it. Um, and when it was taken, here are the, the um, copyright permissions. So for instance, if you personally want to change these and make it public domain, or, uh, you know, you'll have to do some research. I'm not sure what the differences between all of these are, but put whatever you are comfortable with. We will know because we have our permission form signed from you that we are allowed to use these photos. Whether you want the rest of Flickr, the rest of the world to be able to use these photos, that is uh, up to you and you will have to choose um, on uh, uh it, in the metadata, there's a way to, like I said um, earlier, to do a bulk edit of all of your permissions. I haven't gone into that yet, so, uh, and we probably won't be covering that today. Um, it'll show you the camera that you took it on, the lens that you use. I love this because sometimes I just forget. It'll show you what aperture and f-stop and shutter speed and ISO and, you know, the millimeters of your lens. If you used a flash or not, I just geek out about this. So um, it shows you how many groups it's in. So right now it's only in the Master Naturalist Photo Safari and I can take it out of there with one click. Um, I don't want to do that, but you can, you can independently, um, Flickr lets you do a lot of nice editing just within uh, this kind of metadata section. You can add additional tags, you can add it to additional albums, you can tag people here, and then there's um, some additional privacy and, um, you know, allowing people to comment and tag and, and things like that down here. But now we see this little map option over here. Um, this is cool, but right now it's saying there's, this could have been taken anywhere in the world. So we're going to say add this map, this photo to your map, and this will take us to a fun feature that will um, allow us, hang on, we put the photo into Finder for you. Okay. Um, so right now I just selected that one photo, but I just uploaded, what, 1920 photos that I want to 
set the location. Those were all taken at one location. So um, I'm instead of photos from batch, I'm going to go to all of your content. And this will now bring up all of my photos down here and it will show me which ones have location. Let me move that. I don't know if you can see it. Um, this will show me which photos have locations um, tagged to them and which do not. So anything down here with a little blue circle, and I hope this is large enough for everyone. I'm going to make it. I don't know if I can make it any bigger. Uh, there's a little blue circle. That means that this image is already on the map. Um, and let me see if it will take me there. So you see, I've marked a few locations already. Um, I thought it would pop up here, but it's not doing that. But anyway, we're going to skip that for now and you can just see, okay, I've gone to five different locations um, throughout the Austin and Bastrop area that I've tagged and I can click on them and see, okay, here, here are those photos. And you can see the ones that I just uploaded do not have that blue circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these, which I just use my shift key. Um, I'll click one and then I'll hit shift and I'll click the last one and all of the ones in between will be selected. So these were taken at a location um, over in this general direction. Let me see if I can search for it. Uh, probably not. So what I'll have to do is go to Google Maps. Um, let me just try it and see if, if it works so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know the exact address, but I know it was called the Still Waters Retreat Center. And it says no results found, which is what I thought. So I'm going to go to Google Maps. I'm going to paste in Stillwater's Retreat Austin and search for it. And it'll pull it up right here. So now I can see um, kind of where that is. And you should you might be able to take the GPS points too where they are I'm not quite sure but basically in this general area so if I go back to my map and I know where circle C ranch is oops do I though <laughs> Granada estate Okay, so this is near this Y. Okay, it's like right over here somewhere. It's just south of that HEB. Okay. There's the HEB. And there's a bet, probably better way to do this where I can find the GPS points. If anybody can point me in that direction, I because I'm not finding them on Google super easily. Um, Maybe if I hit share, no, that's not what I want to do. Okay, well, it is approximately right over here. So I'm just going to say it's pretty much near here. Um, so I'm going to drop them there. So again, I had all of those photos selected. And now they have little blue circles and now a new data point popped up that says 19 images and this is their location. So if I go back to our photo stream, we can say, yes, I want to do it. Those changes should be saved because this popped up. Um, so I'm just gonna say, okay. And now if I go back to the same image and scroll down, it should have a map location. Sorry, that one was rough, but it's it's pretty simple. It's just 
finding your exact location because the the search feature within Flickr, like it, it a lot of the time it doesn't pull up the names of places. Um, so you have to either know exactly where it is or um, or do what I just did, which is kind of hunt around until you find the exact spot. And again, we don't need exact locations, just precisely, you know, um, as, as precise as you can get would be useful. And even if you don't want, if it's on someone's private land or you want to um, kind of disclose the exact location, but we know, say it's in Houston, you can just kind of put it like right smack dab in the center of Houston. It's, um, we would just love to know approximately where the photos were taken. So that's location. And let me go back to my slideshow now um, and make sure we covered all of that. We went through our photo stream. We created albums and we went through galleries. Again, we don't need to do those, but just so you know, they are different than your photo stream and they are different than our groups. We went through joining our master naturalist group and adding and uploading the photos to the group and then adding and editing metadata, including name, description, tags, location, things like that. Um, and now we will talk about the photo release form. So this is not a release form like we were talking about before with um, having your subjects sign a release form. This is for basically you sign it, letting, uh, letting us know that we can use your photo with attribution um, and that we will be giving you photo credit and you'll be writing out how you want to be credited. Um, and so you can see here that um, this is the form we will be sending around. It warrants that the photographs are owned exclusively by the source and or photographer. So you still own the photos and that you have the right to authorize their use. And you understand that the use by Parks and Wildlife will give credit to the source or photographer. And the photo credit will be in the specific name of however you want to be credited. Um, and releases and holds Parks and Wildlife from any claims regarding the use of the photographs. Um, and so you'll sign, print, um, you know, this isn't necessary because you'll, I would love if you guys could submit this form kind of as soon as possible before you start submitting photos, just so we have that on file. And you may not know how many photographs you're gonna enclose. Um, and this was kind of created when maybe you may have been mailing in photos and re we would return photographs to you. Again, just put your phone number and email address. You can, you can kind of um, ignore these number of photos, return photos and addresses. Um, and just give us a way to to contact you. If you'd like to put your address, that's fine too. Um, and if you could be, if you could email those forms, sign and email those forms, and um, email them to me and Michelle. And only one form is needed for all of your submissions. Um, and now we're on to questions. So these were some questions that Michelle and I came up with yesterday. Um, and we just thought we'd answer them for you. Hopefully we'll answer some questions you have and then we'll get to any others. So if you have them, if you could type them in the chat now so we can get to them after we go through these. Um, so one was, if I take pictures of people, do I need to have people sign a photo release form? Like I mentioned, um, my answer as of right now is no, but I will get back to you as soon as possible about that. Um, can I submit both new photos and old photos from my personal photo library? Yes, if you have these photos that exist already um, and you like them and they're good quality, please submit them. And you know, you may not even need to go out and take new photos, but we would love if, if you can go out and specifically target your photography sessions to these kind of prompts, these three um, topics, then that would be very helpful and will more than likely get photos that match our needs more. But if you do have photos from previous, um, from years past that match the, these categories, please include them. And then what if other members from my chapter wanna submit photos? Um, 
so we would love to keep it to the small group for now, like people who have background in photography. Um, if others want to join, there's two ways we could do it. We haven't fully decided on this. They could either, um, if they have some background in photography, they could reach out to Michelle and we could add them to the group and get them through the orientation. Um, or, uh, and they would have to sign the photo release form or theoretically they could submit their photos to you, but that would require them to also, um, whoever takes the photos needs to sign a photo release form. So, um, it may just eliminate a step of them having to create a Flickr account if they don't feel like doing that. But really, we just want the highest quality photos as possible. So that's why we've reached out to you all because we know you're comfortable behind a camera. So if there's anybody else from your chapter who wants to help, um, let's meet with Michelle and see what those options are. Um, and yeah, so those are the questions we could think of. Are there, are there any others? Make it back to the chat. I don't even know. If y'all have um, questions, um, please go ahead and uh, add them to the chat and we'll moderate and try to get those answered. Um, I know there might be a little bit of a delay, so we'll give you just a few minutes to to send your questions there. Or you, sh I think, I believe you're able to also come off mic um, or unmute yourself and ask the question too. So, um, did you see? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I saw something pop up. So let me let me. Um, so everybody, those who don't see the chat, I'll read it. Um, so Jerry says, my current camera of choice is an iPhone 13 because of its portability and my ability to take photos without being conspicuous. Is that adequate? The new iPhones are fantastic. I I mean, I can't wait to get one because. It eliminates a lot of the need to carry around a big heavy camera. So I think the, um, you know, one thing you might want to consider is like using more of the portrait mode features to kind of give it more of a professional quality. Um, but those cameras are great. If, if that's what you're liking right now, use it. And um, if you're happy with it, um, yeah, portrait mode and macro, I, I think the technology has advanced so much that sometimes they look better than the photos I take on my like the iPhone camera has the, has the like highest industry standard um camera on a phone right now yeah and so yes the answer is please use that if if you have access to it and like it um and so really here I should change that too camera or iPhone 13 <laughs> um, and hard drive, you know, um, I'm, I'm having a lot of issues with hard drives right now. So my recommendation is save them. If you have some sort of cloud storage, if you have a backup drive, use that. Um, high resolution photos, that that's kind of self-explanatory and assumes that we want these to be good quality, high resolution photos. Um, they don't need to be raw or anything like that, but uh, the highest resolution that, you know, it can be exported as um, with your camera. And for your own purposes, some sort of photo organizer or editor, um, the photos don't need to be edited, but it would be, I'm sure, uh, this is what I do. I go out and I take thousands of pictures and then I only want to use 10 of them. So I have to weed through and pick out these are the 10 best and some and set them aside. Um, and maybe I'll adjust the color or the light a little bit, but nothing super fancy. And um, obviously computer and, and internet, a, a internet that will reach to Flickr and a Flickr account, the photo release form, um, signed and submitted to us and then the metadata. Um, so if you want to kind of, as you're out in the field, keep a little notebook or, or write down every day, kind of, these are the locations I went to and film or, and photographed. And this is what we captured that day. Um, just to make the metadata process go a little bit more quickly. Um, and that is it. And I'm so grateful for you all because this is going to be such a huge help to, to have you on board 
Um, and I'm sure your images are going to be incredibly beautiful. So thank you so much. And we've got a couple contact questions. Info. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple questions in the chat, um, and I'll moderate them for you. Um, so Roberto asks, may we upload a test photo now to make sure it shows up properly with the information you need? That would be wonderful. Yes, we would love that. And then there's a request um, for you to send us the slideshow when you're done. Yes, and I will do can, that, Michelle. You can send that with that email. Yes, that so it will be the photo release form, that article about reaching communities, um, and this PDF. And I think that will be it. And maybe at some point, Michelle will send a link to this uh, recorded presentation. Um, but if there's anything you need from me, I'm, I'm like Michelle mentioned, I'm gonna I'm gonna sadly be leaving the agency in about two and a half weeks. Um, so with the photo release forms, if you're able to just CC both me and Michelle, and then after May 13th, I won't be with the agency anymore. So if you need anything from me specifically, um, please email me within that time and otherwise um, email Michelle and I'm, I'm excited. I, I might continue to add to this project or see what photos I have too, because um, there's a lot of things that are kind of sitting around that I would love to get have used as I'm sure you guys um, are feeling. So thank you for, for doing this really great work. So I'm gonna stop the recording now. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat and then I'm going to, we'll stay on for just a couple minutes um, to see if anything comes in. But if not, you're free to go.